that's usually what you're looking at there. That's the uh, termination going outside, and then the power vent is usually right inside up against the ceiling and between the joists type of thing. So. But This is the inlet, and that's the outlet. And usually there's a hood right on the outside of the house and just dumps right outside. That's it. And you can see in this little motor, there's little loop areas there to oil the motors. Most guys don't do that either. They should be oiled. Usually they're up against the ceiling, you know, and you can't get to them. It's just what I use for a couple of jumpers. I just got these extension cords that I have, um, you know, little alligator clips for quick connections. I got some of these uh, 110 24 volt testers. Use them a lot. It's an old style 24 volt one that was on a furnace that I took out. I just got it wired up here. I'm going to run it and show you how it operates. Basically, what they use these for is if they don't have a chimney, this is a mechanical draft. A lot of builders will use these. This is an older one. Uh, it's been discontinued this style, but there's a lot of them out there. They have them for oil and for gas. This particular one is 24 volts. It's for gas. And basically, the reason why I'm doing this video is usually these power venters are up against the ceiling in the cellar and directly going right out to a, a vent hood. So, you know, for you to get to these controls, they're usually up inside the joists and you can't get to them, you can't see what they look like. So I figured I'd do a little video on how they're wired and they're pretty basic. Give you guys an idea. Now like I said, there's all different kinds, but this one here is a particular, it's a model. There's the model right there. GPAK-J. I think they stopped making these in 92. Okay, so I just got it wired up here. Um, I got 110 coming in here going to a Y connection and I got another 110 going over just feeding the step down transform to give my 24 volts okay and I got 24 volts coming out of here to a three wire I got the green hooked up to the common the white is going to be my thermostat feeding that and then coming back is the red Basically coming in here, I just got uh, 110 coming in. G goes to ground. This is like a, just a little jumper connection I use. Black goes to black, and white is neutral, obviously. So basically, what happens is the power comes in. It goes through this little relay here that's going to get energized with 24 volts. It powers up the burner motor, and once the burner motor powers up the power venter motor it pulls this little vacuum you know this motor will spin pulls this vacuum switch in and on a low voltage side white's coming in which is going to this relay blue and also feeding power to this vacuum switch so once this relay pulls in and the orange which would be the green line here is the common Alright, so basically what happens is I'm going to feed power up through the white, be like a call, a thermostat, this would be considered my thermostat right here. I'll send power up to the white, white will energize this little relay which already has the common tool, which will start the motor, and it also feed 
power to this side of the vacuum switch. And this is normally open until the power venter runs and it'll send power back through the yellow, which is my red here, which I have the red hooked up to a little um, low voltage light that's hooked up to the common. So when this thing runs, this light comes on, it's going to say we're, we're energizing power to the burner, you know, or to the furnace or boiler, which goes through the limit, then to the gas valve. Okay. So this is just like a call for heat here. This is just 24 volts. Just jump that out. That's like the thermostat. Alright. Motor runs. Exhaust out. Pulls the vacuum switch in. It actually clicks the relay in. Turns the motor on. This vacuum switch makes from this tube. And we got power to the burner. Now some of these have uh, a post purge, which this one doesn't have. This relay does not have a post purge on it. So as soon as I turn the thermostat off, which I disconnect this, motor dies, it shuts power off. Now if that relay goes, I would probably put like a uh, heat sequencer in it. It has a delay, and you could buy a kit for this that has a post purge because this is a, a forced draft. And after you're done running a gas appliance, you really need to draft it for a while, a post-purge, um, to get rid of the fumes in the boiler. And I'm going to show you, I have the furnace outside here, I'm going to show you what happened to the furnace, because this thing didn't have a post-purge. Alright, I got the furnace out here in my boneyard, I'm going to show it to you. See the draft induce how it's all cooked. This is all cracked here. That's what happens. You don't have a post purge. You know this the unit shut off and this thing just cooked. Well, anyway, I just changed this furnace there last week, so you really need to go to the dump with all this stuff. I'm also going to get the wire and diagram, um, and I'll show you guys that. I'll show you guys the wire and diagram on that, how it's wired. And I know there's an optional. Here's the Venta, um, six inch minimum clearance on gas. Oil is 18 inches to combustibles. Gas is only six. Or if you, within one inch, you can put a piece of sheet metal, a one inch gap between the metal and the wood, and then another gap, and you can get closer. If you're closer than six inches, you can do that also. And that's it. Hope you guys didn't mind my little mock up here. It's just playing around here. Just wanted to show you guys how this thing works. Alright, guys, here we go. It's the wiring diagram, like I talked about here. And going up to the thermostat, which was basically, you know, the transformer I just had hooked up there. We came in on white, fed the relay for the blower motor, and blew to that, you know, um, pressure switch. Once this energized orange was common which was my green low voltage going up there which was always present for the call of thermo when the call of thermostat called energized this relay and also sent power through the switch motor ran pulled that vacuum switch in sent voltage uh, low voltage back down to white to run the thermo uh, the furnace. And if you look at this one, this one didn't have a post purge, but if you scroll down, this next unit right here um, did have a post purge on it. And there was an option where you could add that time delay. And this one here had it. There's another diagram right there, usually, you know, what they look like. You know, that's right up against the, the floor joist type of thing. Much better off with a chimney, but these are out there. These are out there. It's like shutting off the thermostat right here.
really should have had a post purge on it, but it didn't. Um, that's something we could add. Heat sequence uh, or something like that would do it. Now, really, the proper way to you unplug this thing so I don't get zapped. Really, the proper way to hook these things up, the way I like to see them hooked up, is if you're going to put them, you know, up next to the ceiling, have them like that with an elbow, and then out. So, you know, you get access to all these controls. That's the best way to do it. You put a 4-inch elbow right here, and then out. Uh, makes it a lot easier. But in the real world, most of the time, these things are right up against the ceiling. You can't even get to these controls. You're up there with a mirror trying to see what's going where. It's right up against the ceiling. That's the experience I've had with them. You know, and they're all wide, and it's a pain in the butt to pull them down. There's also a little damper uh, lever in here. This one's rotted out. But you can adjust this damper to slow down the draft if you had to. Alright guys, so I appreciate you watching.